Hey guys, so this is a, a design team project from Make It Love, and so I'm going to play with my distress options today and a lot of like the new team stuff that I have gathered from a lot of uh, ephemers and and uh, findings from the archaeology line. Um, yeah, so one of the things that uh, I've learned uh, while playing with this is that uh, distress inks are relatively forgiving, um, um, but distress oxides take their forgiveness to like a whole new level. Um, they layer really well on top of each other at the same time, uh, they, they, they blend really, really well. And um, if you're like really afraid of harsh lines, just remember because distress oxides, they tend to um, oxidize as like uh, the, the, its exposure to air, which has uh, uh, some amount of water vapor. Um, your look is going to soften a lot, and so you're not going to be too worried about the harsh lines. Um, just an uh, important tip to have in, have in mind. The colors that you see right here, they are not uh, the three colors that will come out on the project over time. And uh, you just need to trust that the inks will do their magic. And this is a <gasps> this is like a mess. <laughs> it is not. I'll show you that this is great. And you see me like spraying some of like uh, that um, uh, that water over it with a spray bottle, and you get like this just really nice droplet effect. And so the distress ox actually acts like distress ink in this similar fashion. And I do that uh, a lot while I'm drying as well and add layers upon layers upon layers. Um, so next part is speed up really very much more so they don't get bored seeing me how I do it. But one of the things that I've also tried to do is I used like a acrylic uh, glass block and I applied um, paint onto it, or rather uh, distress uh, oxides onto it so that I can put it in the places that I kind of want that has like a more of like a particular color or something. Um, yeah, and if this sounds, uh, if this entire look looks too, uh, um, garish for you. Um, just take heart that over time uh, it actually um, uh, mutes out, yeah, because of this reaction with uh, the water vapor in the air. Uh, but I really, really like uh, where this is going right now. And as you can see, um, after spraying on like the uh, micro spray, uh, you get this really nice uh, effect. I'm just gonna let it dry. Um, and in the next part of the video, I'm going to show you how I like, prepare like the little elements, uh, some of them, so that uh, they can be ready for like various sunblasts. So that's like my backing. And I'm going to do um, a little bit of stenciling. Now in real life, the uh, this stenciling kind of look, kind of disappears a little bit because of the fact that distress oxide, when it reacts to air, it's going to be uh, a lot muted. So even if you're going to see like a stark contrast here, you need to remember that uh, its final effect is just going to be a lot more muted. It's not going to be... Uh, so obvious. Um, you will see in like the final photo uh, below uh, or later, and you'll be seeing that the uh, it almost mutes up to almost like a watermark sort of look. Now for the uh, this uh, the stress oxides, I applied them also further on onto this uh, uh, gear cutout. This is from the new Tim Holtz uh, Artisan's die. Uh, it is the uh, what do you call it? The industrial. Um, set and what you get is like this really nice uh, um, smaller size med or medium size as I would say um, dies which are very hard to do as a metal uh, a steel die so um, the technology they have made possible but uh, um, but because I cut it out on like thin chipboard uh, they just look really really good <coughs> they almost feel like laser cuts but they're actually not um, which is really nice if you uh, um, ever like worked with like thinner chipboard, um, and to have this uh, available to us in such a detail is just uh, kind of fun. Um, something that was not uh, possible uh, in which they had to use a lot of like laser cutting in the past. Okay, and what you see me doing is actually I'm mounting that uh, mixed media background onto. Uh, some of uh, this paper, which I've actually mounted onto the Tim Holtz. I can't remember what size this is, it's probably medium size. Uh, that large uh, etc. tag, also from Ideology, which is this really large uh, wooden uh, chipboard tag in which uh, it's quite thick. And they kind of use, uh, I can, can use this as like kind of like a base for a sombras. And that's what I did. And the paper that, the backing paper at the back is actually from um, Blue Fern Studios, and I, if I'm not wrong, I think it's from the Artisan collection, if 
from Chesterville Artisan Collection. Yeah, it's a 2016 Bluefern Studios uh, paper, but this is really, really nice. And those of you who have worked with Bluefern papers know that they're actually quite uh, sturdy. And here you see me, what I'm doing is actually I dyed the paper twine, which is also available at Latest Love. Um, and I've used that as part of uh, my focal point in drawing the elements together. Here I'm using some of the baseboard, also from Tim Holtz, uh, from the new ideology line. And uh, these baseboards are just great because they're like printed uh, chipboard. So they're really, really thick and they add a lot of uh, dimension to the project. Um, and I'm also, they also have like those that have the sayings on it. Um, so those are really cool as well. And uh, those little stars at the corner, I also did stick them on uh, using uh, glossy accents, which is not in this video. Um, onto the um, rest, like scale around the text, just so that they add a little bit of interest to them. Um, otherwise, the glue that I actually I'm using right now is actually the uh, collage medium from Ranger that we have, um, that they have like shrunk it down to like a, a smaller bottle, so for as much easier handling as a glue. And finally, uh, to move on to the last uh, step of that, uh, this whole assemblage thing, I actually did uh, pull out some of my um, collage uh, medium, I think it's called crazing, which kind of gives this almost like crackling effect. Um, and I'm, even though I'm, in, I'm applying it via uh, like a, a metal spatula, but in reality, after that, I did paint it over the staining. And you get this really nice crackling look, which is uh, um, very hard to pick up by the camera. So you just have to trust me that in real life, it looks really good. So these are some pictures, and thank you guys for watching. Bye.